Okay, good afternoon. There we go. Okay, yeah. now, go ahead. All righty. Well, as Paul said, I'm a granddaughter of Andrew and Anna Tosted. Um, uh, my parents were Harold and Olive Tosted, and um, I have an older sister, Nancy, um, older brother, Chuck. Uh, my sister uh, did a nice write-up for the Rolette Centennial book about Andrew and Anna, and I have borrowed some of her information that I know she worked with Uncle Kenneth uh, to put that together at that time. So uh, it it takes a village, a uh, collaboration of many people to, to get things going. Um, so it's my privilege to tell you the little bit I know about Anna and Andrew. Um, uh, they were not living by the time I was born. In fact, very few of their grandchildren had the privilege of, of knowing them at all. Um, only two grandchildren were born before Anna died, and they are both gone now. And I think maybe about three others were born before Andrew died, but they would have been very young. So I doubt they have any memory of Andrew. Um, so we are grateful for any information that's been passed down to us. Uh, this is a picture of Severin Rasmussen Hina and Melina, Melina Olstadter Tosted. Uh, they would be Andrew's parents. They lived in Stavanger, Norway. And this is a very well-known picture in Norway. And these would be Severin's parents. So you see Severin in about the four o'clock position. His parents were Rasmus Paulsen Hinna and Anna Marie Augland. And, and Andrew Tosted would have known uh, his grandparents, his paternal grandparents. Uh, he would not have known his maternal grandparents because they had died prior to his birth. Uh, whoops, wrong way. Uh, this is the earliest picture uh, we have of the Severin uh, Rasmussen family, about 1885. Uh, in the back row um, is Sigvart Bertinus, and then next to him is Andrew. They both are kind of in their Napoleon pose with their hands tucked in their shirt, mm -hmm. in their coats. Um, and then next to Andrew is his oldest brother, Rasmus. Mm -hmm. uh, the second row is their sister, Anna. Seated is their mother, Milena, their father, Severin. And the little guy on the, on the far side is Paul. And the littlest in the family was Magnus. Oops, I keep going the wrong way, sorry. I'm just going to tell you briefly about the siblings. Uh, this is Rasmus. He was born in 1869 and died in 1921. He did emigrate to the United States in 1896, but he returned to Norway two years later and mm -hmm. was there, stayed in Norway permanently. Um, for those of you that remember uh, Pete and Malena coming to uh, North Dakota to visit, uh, Malena was Rasmus's daughter. And you also might remember Sigurd, and Sigurd was Rasmus's son. This is Andrew again, uh, 1871 to 1950. He emigrated in 1893 and lived the rest of his life in Rolette County. This is Sigvart Bertinus. I remember my dad calling him <laughs> Uncle Tinus, but he had actually changed his name to Bert Stevenson when he came to the United States. Uh, he was born in 1873, died 1936, and I found that he was the first in the family to emigrate. He came in 1891. Uh, he apparently spent some time in both North Dakota and Oregon, but lived most of his life in Montana, where he is buried. He never married and had no family. I think Andrew went to the funeral, didn't he? Um, I don't know. That'd be a great I thing to that, know. I heard that Andrew and Paul both went to the funeral. Yeah, keep Wonderful. going. Uh, this is their sister, Anna. 
Uh, she was born in 1876, died in 1959. She lived in Norway her entire life. She married Thomas Lea and has a large had a large family of 12 children. Uh, so many of us know Bjorn and he would be a descendant of Anna. Yeah, Bjorn is on the call today. So Bjorn, Great. Riley, do you want to get a drink here? Uh, a um, when we stop. Okay. I got the uh, candy. Okay. I, I might ask uh, participants to mute themselves. Oh, and I was going to mention, I think we'll see uh, our, yes. our, uh, our discussion till the end, if you don't mind, just to make sure I, I get hear through you? everything. So, yes, thank you. Uh, this is This is Paul. Uh, born in 1879, died in 1960. He emigrated in 1896, so three years after Andrew. Also homesteaded and lived uh, most of the rest of his life in Roulette. The youngest brother, Magnus, uh, born in 1885, did immigrate to the United States in 1904. He later returned to Stavanger and then went to Oslo and was pretty much no longer in contact with the rest of the family. So we need a lot more detective work to find out what happened to Magnus. Uh, by the way, on that point, uh, Wanda, uh, Liv Ingri Ingebrigtsen has information on Magnus. Oh, uh, wonderful. I'll make That's exciting. Connection. Thank you. Uh, this is a picture of Tosta in near Stavanger. Um, I'm sure it has changed quite a bit now. I'm not sure what year this picture dates to. And this is the Severin Rasmussen home in Norway. Um, Andrew is actually not in this picture. Uh, his parents are and some of his siblings, some of his nieces and nephews. Uh, this same uh, photo is in the, the book that was published in 1986, uh, uh, but uh, uh, just gives you a great idea of, of what their um, home was like. Uh, this home was later occupied by Dagfinn and Karin Lea. And when I was in Norway in um, 1976, this is where I stayed. I stayed with Karin and Dagfinn. It was a great time. Oops. This is a picture of the Hetland Lutheran Church in Stavanger, and this would have been the home church of Severin's family. Um, it's also where Severin and Malena are buried. That's where I'm I married. Have... <laughs> I'm sorry, what? That's where I've been married. Ah, very good, very good. <laughs> um, I have not been able to find Andrew's birth certificate, uh, but I would bet that was where Andrew was baptized. I have found uh, birth certificates, some of his siblings, so I'm not sure why Andrew's doesn't come up. It looks a little different around Hetland Church now, doesn't it? So I I've, I've put this older picture in just because it's more like probably what it looked like when Andrew left Norway. This is the youngest photo we have of Andrew. And uh, both my dad and my uncle Albert thought it was probably his confirmation picture. Uh, we don't know um, the level of formal education that Andrew had, at least I have not found that, uh, but we do know he could read and write. And when I was in Norway uh, in 76, this store was pointed out to me as where Andrew worked prior to emigrating to the United States. Now in 76, it was a bookstore I do not recall what I was told it was at the time Andrew worked there, um, but possibly we'll be able to find that out sometime. When Andrew decided to uh, emigrate, uh, it was probably for economic reasons. Um, they were, farms were small, there was limited economic opportunity, especially at that time. And he, uh, uh, came on a ship that was part of the Hamburg American uh, line. Now, what I read was that most of the time, uh, the Scandinavians had to take feeder ships or smaller ships uh, to Hamburg and then boarded 
the larger um, ocean liners to come to America. However, the um, the ship's manifest does say Christiansen to New York. So I, I don't know. It maybe did come directly. And if uh, looking through the manifest, almost everyone was from Norway and Sweden. So they may have left directly from Christiansen. Uh, the ship was called the Italia. I know it took about 16 days to cross. And I found that that um, steerage passengers paid 16 to 18 dollars for one-way passage. So I looked up to see what that would be in today's money and it would actually be a little over 600 dollars. So it, it doesn't sound like much but I bet that was still not easy for many people to accumulate. Uh, the other thing I found is that the Italia ran aground north of Scotland in the fog on the 8th of June in 1893. So I think that had to be when Andrew was on the ship because he arrived on the 22nd. So he would have left. Um, that would have been the voyage they were on. So it'd be fun to see if I could find out anything more about um, how did they how did they get the ship off the land when it ran aground. This is from the ship's manifest. And in the area I circled, um, um, Grandpa Tosted is listed as Andreas Severinsen Tosted. He's 22 years old. He lists his occupation as farmer. He is leaving from Stavanger and he is going to Hillsboro. And if you look right under um, Andrew's name, there's Gabriel Eglinsdahl and Mara Eglinsdahl also heading to Hillsboro. So I think they probably all came together. The pictures on the right are Gabriel and Mara Eglinsdahl. And kind of fun fact, uh, a niece of Andrew and Anna, later marries a grandson of Gabriel and Mara Eglinsdahl. Uh, they changed their name in the United States to Egland. Wanda, this is okay. Jeff. I have a question. Where is Hillsboro? It's, um, do you know where Fargo, North Dakota is? Yes. It's just north of Fargo on the Red River. Okay, great. Thank you. Um. And the other thing I think is very interesting on the ship's manifest is down at the bottom, it, it lists who's on board. Uh, there are 598 adults, 62 children, and 23 infants. It says 595 adults can read and write. So out of all of those people, there were only three that couldn't read and write, which I think is kind of astounding which, um, you know, I guess speaks to the importance of literacy in the Scandinavian countries then as now. They have one of the highest literacy rates in the world. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Andrew was processed through Ellis Island. Uh, you may notice this does not look like what we think of as Ellis Island. I believe this particular building burned um, and the Ellis Island that was restored, the building uh, was built in 1900. So this is the older version of what was at Ellis Island. So probably it was what was there when Andrew came through. Um, we know that uh, um, Andrew went um, um, from New York on to probably Hillsboro, um, and he spent some time in, in what we would call the Red River Valley. Uh, he uh, spent time working on farms and uh, in the region of Belmont, which is just further up the Red River from Hillsboro. And uh, he also, uh, in the 1900 census, is listed as uh, living in Belmont with Iver and Louisa Iverson, and the Iversons are pictured in the oval. They had uh, three children, and Andrew is listed as being a servant, 
which probably means he worked for them for room and board, or at least in part. Andrew also worked at Ivor Iverson's store in Belmont. Um, and we know that I, Iverson is the one who probably sent Andrew to Rolette County to check out some land at one time. Now, Iverson didn't ever move there, but it probably is what sparked um, Andrew to think about homesteading. Mm. I adore this picture of my grandpa in the buffalo coat, um, and it was taken about 1900. Oops, I forgot about these. <laughs> so there you can see Andrew's name was on the very bottom of the census. Um, and it um, lists him as servant to the family he's living with, store clerk by occupation. Uh, so in um, April 11th, 1902, Andrew does file for homestead in Rollette County. Now, just to kind of uh, summarize what it, the Homestead Act entailed, uh, it's the Homestead Act of 1862. Uh, you had to be a citizen or declare intent to become a citizen. You also had to prove that you did not fight against the United States or aid its enemies. Uh, you were required to uh, put up a filing fee of $1.25. And then you had uh, to prove up uh, in other words, you had to meet the requirements of living on the land for four years, building a home, making improvements, which could include farming the land. Uh, so when Andrew filed in uh, 1902, he uh, had to meet those requirements. Now, I, I think it's a little bit interesting that he does not actually prove up until 1909. And I'm not sure why there would be uh, that extra time in there. Uh, yeah. But apparently Paul and Andrew proved up at the same time, um, uh, 11th of October, 1909. So this shows uh, where Andrew's land uh, that he homesteaded on in relationship to Roulette is located. Uh, you might also notice the Husaby land. There is the land my dad eventually bought um, so now both properties are my brothers. This is the, I think the more interesting paper, uh, it's, it's their proof that they had to present at the time they um, finalized their homestead agreement. Uh, so you could, if you can read it at the top, uh, it's got Andrew's name on and it goes, he's age 36 by this time. And it tells a little bit about what he had to do. So he says he settled there in April. I, it looks like 1907, but it had to be earlier than that. So I don't know if that's a two or not sure. Um, and uh, did some breaking and built my house and established actual residency in um, home 1902. And then it goes on to say, you know, that there was a house, uh, a barn, a granary, and a machine shed, and, you know, gives the approximate dimensions of those. It also uh, says that I cultivated 25 acres in 1902, 50 acres in 1903, 80 acres in 1904, 100 acres in 1905, 125 acres in 1906, and same amount each year since. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what it says, uh, um, but he continued to cultivate uh, the land there as was required for proving up. Um, when Anna was in the, when Andrew was in the Red River Valley working is probably when he met um, Anna, at a Haugstead, and he went back and married Anna Haugstead in the 22nd of February, 1905, in Cummings, North Dakota, where she uh, was born and lived. 
Um, Anna was born in Cummings, uh, but her parents were immigrants from Norway. They both came from Hallingdal. Uh, her father was Thor B. Hugstad. He came from Hull. And her mother was Gertie Renslin from Gaul. And um, we have kept a connection with the Renslins all through the years. And uh, we still connect with people that live on the farm where Gertie uh, grew up in um, in Hollingdale. So that, that's been a real delight to have that connection. Uh, we know that the day after um, Andrew and Anna were married, uh, they boarded the train, which would have taken them to Rolla, and Andrew Beaver came to meet them. He uh, came in his lumber wagon pulled by a team of horses, and he brought them from Rolla to Roulette. And we have heard the story many times um, that uh, Anna saw what a beautiful day it was. Uh, there, the snow was pretty much gone and there was water standing in the fields. And uh, she must have felt pretty positive about coming to Roulette at that time. I'm glad it wasn't a blizzard the day they arrived. This was the house that Andrew brought Anna too, although it didn't look this good at that time. It was a tar paper house when they arrived. And uh, initially it only had a stove pipe. Uh, it was in later years that Anna's uh, brother came and helped them side the house and put in a real chimney. The house was about 10 by 12 feet. It still is standing uh, on the farmstead. And uh, uh, both the the two oldest children, Myrtle and Selmer, were born while Andrew and Anna lived in this house. So improvements were made. The big house was built in 1908 to 1909. And um, I, I, you could see the other buildings that were added, excuse me. Um, so they developed a, a lovely homestead through the years. Uh, in addition to their crops, they raised uh, cattle, hogs, chickens, and we know that Anna sold eggs, cream, and butter to families in Roulette. She was known for her excellent quality butter. Um, I was also talking to my cousin Dan Tosted the other day, and his father was Selmer, the oldest son. And the first tractor on the farm was actually one Selmer built by putting together different parts of other tractors and machinery. Uh, and Dan says he still has that tractor on his farm. So I'm looking forward to making a point to go to see it next time I'm up to Roulette. Uh, after that, uh, Dan says they uh, did get a Waterloo Boy tractor, which was the um, the line that eventually became John Deere tractors. And he also said they had a Hart Parr tractor, which is the line that eventually became Oliver tractors. Um, so I thought that was just great information. I was glad to learn about that. This is Valley Lutheran Church in Roulette. Andrew and Anna were initially members of Westland Church, but when it closed, uh, the family moved to Valley Lutheran in Roulette. And I know Myrtle and Selmer were baptized at Westland. I'm not uh, sure about Bernice and, uh, uh, but, and Gladys, but I think the rest of them were baptized and confirmed at Valley. In 1909, uh, Paul and Andrew returned to Norway following the death of their father. And um, many thanks to Paul for sharing this picture with me. Um, either coming or going from Norway in 1909, Paul and Andrew stopped in New York and, and took a sightseeing tour. And that's when this picture was taken. They are in the second to the back, second row to the back in the vehicle, Andrew has a pipe and uh, Paul has the lighter colored hat on. And I just, I think this is just a great picture from 1909. See how it says leaves the flat iron building.
while they were back in Norway, they had this picture taken um, with their mother. Um, so Rasmus and Anna are in the picture as well as Andrew and Paul. So Andrew was an accomplished ice skater. And in 1934, he won a fancy skating contest held in Roulette. Um, he would have been 63 years old at the time. I was pretty sure I had seen his ice skates at some point, um, uh, but couldn't track down where they are right now. Although my cousin Dan also recalls seeing them and they were the um, clamp on kinds of skates that just clamped onto your shoes that he wore when he won the skating contest. I don't have very many pictures of Andrew and Anna as they uh, aged. I'm sure there's a few more out, out there. Um, on the far left in the sweater that's buttoned up is Andrew. And Anna is third from the right, right in front of my Uncle Kenneth. And I can't help but notice Anna's arthritic hands in this picture. Mm -hmm. And this had to be not too long, you know, not too many years before she died. Um, and just for those of you that that know um, some of our family, I'll, I'll tell you who's in this picture. Um, next to Andrew is Irvin Tosted. And then the younger man is their cousin, Harlan Sandro. Uh, mostly we just see a hat behind Harlan. I'm pretty sure that's Selmer, but you really can't see him. And then the, the young teenager that doesn't look like she's totally happy to be there is my Aunt Esther. <laughs> <laughs> and next to her is Myrtle. And then behind uh, Grandma Tosted is my Uncle Kenneth, who, as many as you, you know, is 98 years old and lives in rugby. And stylish, as always, is my Aunt Bernice. And then next to Bernice is their cousin, um, Yvonne Sandro. Um, so, you know, I'm again, I know there's a few more pictures of Andrew and Anna as the years went by, but um, I don't have many, but this one you can see them. This one's probably been during. Um, in 1947, Andrew did go back to Norway one last time, um, you know, Anna would have died by then, and he got to see his sister, Anna, while he was back in Norway. So this is Andrew and his sister, Anna Leah, which I think is just a beautiful picture. Andrew and Anna had 10 children. Um, they are all on this picture. We have no family pictures of them as young a young family. Um, I do have one other picture of them all together taken in the 60s. Um, I, I used this one for, for this purpose today. Um, I think they just didn't have the money probably to have a photo taken of as a family and they didn't have a camera. The few pictures we have of any of the children when they were younger um, sometimes were taken by neighbors and we've been able to acquire a few through the years. Um, so it would it would be a, had been a wonderful thing had they been able to do that, but I, I don't think they did. Um, I could probably talk for an hour or more about my aunts and uncles. Uh, I will just say they were good people. They were people of faith and, okay, I can't talk about them or I'll start crying. Uh, they were just, a great family to grow up in. Okay, <laughs> I'm fine. Um, Andrew and Anna had 10 children, and you can see um, <clears throat> their other descendants. So none of these people would be here if Andrew hadn't left Norway in 1893 to come to America. Wanda, Wanda, yes. uh, that, that picture that you had, had um, a few pictures ago uh, with, with, with the, the cousins, cousins that at the, the, the farm. Yes. 
I'm, I'm wondering, wondering if that, that was, was maybe during, during the war years. years. Probably, you know, because Anna died in 1944. Both Albert and my dad were in Europe when she right. died. You know, right. and it was the same month as Pearl Harbor when Anna died. And uh, oh. so I, w I would bet that was probably right. So, so, so I, was I was just wondering, wondering where, where Albert, Albert was. And they they must, must have been, been in, in, yeah. in, in the war. war. Yeah, I think that's correct. Thank you. Um, our children had projects as fourth graders to uh, do a heritage project, and they had to interview the oldest members of the family or or send a form for them to fill out. And um, both Myrtle and Albert did this for our children, and, and they're just gems. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, Gary's going to read this. <laughs> They were always they were always very good in caring for us, guarding and protecting us. For that, I am very thankful. Albert Costa. And this is Albert's picture taken when he graduated from seminary. <laughs> Wanda, are you ready to take questions? Um, I just want to thank my husband for helping with the PowerPoint. Uh, you can see in this picture he's slathering his kumla with some butter and uh, we do a annual uh, uh, Norwegian meal every year and our traditions are being passed on so yes I would love to have any comments or questions okay yeah. sorry I, I identify yourself when you ask the question so we know we <laughs> <clears throat> I want to be, let me, I, 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 oh, I abhor a vacuum. Um, can, can you tell us of that great number of descendants of Andrew and Anna, some of the more interesting people on that list in terms of <laughs> what they might be doing and where they might be located? Oh, so, uh, gosh. I, I don't know what to tell too much. Um, you know, most of the children uh, stayed in the Roulette area. Yeah, but my Aunt Bernice, yeah. who was kind of the yeah. career person, uh, lived most of her life in Longview, Washington. Um, my I, Uncle uh, Albert was a pastor. He uh, served yeah. in uh, the state of Washington. He served in Alaska, and then he came back to North Dakota and was a pastor uh, for many years. He did not marry. Um, my aunt Gladys married a pastor, so they moved around a bit. Uh, um, Absolutely. But um, uh, you know, as I said, most yep. of the family stayed in the Rolette area, or not too far away. Um, cousins, though, were all over the country now. Yep. Um, Tell us a little bit about your brother and the farm that he has developed, and his son. Yeah, my brother is on the farm that my dad got after World War II. I showed you on that map. It was Kitty Corner across from where Andrew Tust had homesteaded. Uh, so he and his son, Matt, are on the farm. Um, and they, have, they now also own um, Andrew's homestead. So they are part of what's called the Century Farms, where... A farm has stayed in the same family for a hundred years. Uh, and that was recognized a few years back. Um, I don't know if that was with a, a North Dakota celebration. I'm not sure. Um, but my brother is uh, very well known as a uh, Angus breeder. And uh, Matt and uh, Chuck have people from all, literally all over the world. They have a strong connection to Angus uh, breeders in Argentina. They just had uh, a group from there come again. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really proud of them and, and what they have built up there. And and um, it's just really fun to see what's going on. Maria, your question? Well, well uh, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah, uh, in 1987, uh, uh, when we visit Roulette, 
we stay at Alba place oh, okay. for my, okay. my and my wife and uh, oh. the youngest also um, uh, boy the two older stay with uh, Stanley and Alec oh. so uh, and he he took all the wash right. he do all the washing of, of clothes and line it up on the bed as, as we come back again my wife <laughs> was so surprised <laughs> Oh, oh, that's that's great. Albert and, was and pretty he, special. And he made a very good um, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. chicken for for a picnic in in the park. <laughs> I remember yeah. special. Like. Uh, that's that's wonderful. I have a question. Is it Arnie? Arnie? No. How, how are you related to the Tostads? What is your connection? No, no, not related. Uh, related to Paul and the Gillian. No, no. Understand. Yeah, so we should uh, visit uh, uh, well, that, that side. But Albert has this house with, uh, with uh, an extra room fun. and has a little hotel room. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. So, Jesus of Christ. And, uh, um, does, does Wanda, do you learn? have any knowledge of how your family handled the depression? Do you know? Uh, um, I don't oh. really know, but of course, like all farmers, they raise no, big gardens of, and, and uh, raise their own chickens and uh, cattle now, and so forth. Um, uh, hogs. Um uh, but I know Kristen told me this one time that they asked Uncle Kenneth if they were ever hungry. And Uncle Kenneth said, we always had eggs. <laughs> so we know they were not wealthy people and, and never gained great wealth, uh, but um, they always took care of each other. And, uh, and apparently when they made the eggs and passed them around the table, it would start from the oldest to the youngest, and grandma would say, make sure there's some eggs for Kenneth. So, <laughs> so there were a few left at the end. Maybe Esther wasn't born yet, or else Esther didn't get any eggs. <laughs> 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 so I, I, th I thought that was a really, you know, a really interesting story to hear. Uh, you know, and I guess I've often thought, um, uh, was grandpa, Okay, I can't talk about these things or I get too teary, <laughs> sorry. Uh, was he happy that he had emigrated? And I think so. Um, just imagining that day, sorry, <laughs> that he was able to prove up his homestead. Had to be quite a day. Right, exactly. Thank you, Frederica, for crying yeah. with me. <laughs> Dad. Wanda, another subject. Um, what did your parents ever, your grandparents, uh, how did they, did they have much connection with the uh, Native Americans on the reservation? Um, I don't know. And, uh, you know, Kenneth, I think, had some memory of people coming from the reservation. Now, I certainly remember as a child, uh, people from the reservation coming to the farm to um, uh, see if they could haul bales or, or do temporary work. That was not uncommon when I was growing up. And my dad was very involved with um, the REA, the Rural Electric Association. Uh, so he did a fair amount of work related to that on the reservation. Um, but uh, beyond that, I, I can't really say that I'm aware. You know, we had a fair number of Native American kids in Rolette when we went to school. Uh, you know, that was just normal interaction for us. And, uh, mm -hmm. and um, many of them are in the community today that I see when I go home. So, um, yeah, it was all good. Um, I was going to say just one other thing. Um, uh, you know, I think one of the values that was very strongly passed on to all of us was um, faith. And um, I think they were wonderful examples of that. <laughs> and uh, 
something that's important to subsequent generations. And for that, I'm very thankful. Did your parents ever talk about the difference between the, the Ebenezer and the Valley Church and why people went one way and not the other? <laughs> well, we kind of talked about this a little bit once. Paul, I did ask Kenneth about that, why they went to Valley instead of Ebenezer. And he said um, Myrtle and Bernice wanted to go to Valley. So I don't think it was any big theological re reason. I think they had friends at Valley and that's where they wanted to go. Sure. And, uh, you know, for those of you that aren't familiar with, with Valley and the Ebenezer Church, uh, Valley was more um, liturgical and the Ebenezer Church uh, uh, less so. I, I don't know how else to say it, uh, but um, uh, I thought that was interesting in our discussion, Paul, that you said your grandfather was very concerned about it not being uh, a state church. Yes, and, yeah. And yeah. Felt that the more liturgical church was yeah. closer to the state church. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was an interesting Paul, discussion. Paul and Andrew must have had some difference uh, going back to even to Norway. I wonder if, if there was. Uh, we don't know, of course. We have. No I idea. don't know, but yes, wouldn't that be interesting? All the questions we didn't ask, but yeah. would love to. <laughs> yeah. There is in our ancestry, as you know, and others might not know, Elias Tosted was a Quaker. <laughs> in 1825, and he knew many of the people who took the restaurant in 1825 mm -hmm. to America, the first Norwegian ship that went there. So the your family, the Tosted family, my family, the Tosted family has connections back to the to that time. Uh, can I just jump in and share a story regarding that? Hello, Hello Bjorn. <laughs> Hello, good to see you. Um, because, uh, as it is right now, uh, I am um, a part of um, the, a former known as the Sons of Norway community. And they're, um, next year in 2025, it's uh, the 200 years anniversary of that um, boat going to uh, New York. Uh, so they're currently planning a departure uh, with a replica um, that mm -hmm. will depart on wow. July, July 4th from Stavanger and it will have um I think there were there were about 56 people on on the sh on the ship at that time um now they're gonna fill it up with 56 people again um some of them will uh, leave the ship uh, rather early um and then there will be 12 people bringing the ship all the way over to New York um expecting uh, um expect expected arrival time will be around um october 9th on uh, 2025 um mm -hmm. so right now there and uh, there is a lot lots of planning going on uh, regarding that that boat and uh another trip um between norway and um and the us bjorn can you be on that That's ship right <laughs> uh, <laughs> no <laughs> i i would probably get I would probably get seasick before I <laughs> even enters the North Sea, and not even thinking about the, the Atlantic. Um, so, uh, n n no, uh, it, it, it's probably not for me. But I, I would be more than happy to see uh, see it depart from Stavanger and maybe even say hi to it when when it arrives in in New York. Um, that I I would happily do. <laughs> that would be exciting. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I, I just want to uh, sh share uh, another story, um, or actually a couple of stories, um, because um, Wanda showed um, some pictures tonight from um, where my grandparents grew up uh, in, in Tosta, uh, just outside of Stavanger, and where my father uh, also grew up, right next to where you stayed, Wanda, um, during your visit um, with with. Doc Finn and, uh, and and I I recall um, Albert um, coming to Norway and to um, visit me and, and and my family. I I can't remember which year it was, but um, he he uh, it, it was it must have been after seventy six uh, eighty oh yeah eighty six yeah um, and and I I remember he. 
that he read me uh, good night stories <laughs> uh, before going to bed. Um, and just... an another fun memory uh, of him is that he he would always record um, tapes uh, yeah. that we would receive every Christmas. Um, would whatever happened in his life uh, um, throughout the year, and I, I remember um, my dad. That was something my 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 father really really appreciated um, throughout the years when when he did that, um, and it was always in in our cassette player um, every every Christmas when it, when it arrived, and so we do have really fun memories of uh, of him doing that, and and. Um, and I'm also fortunate that I, I've, I've been able to uh, meet quite a few of um, of his um, brothers and sisters uh, throughout the years. Um, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a great family. It's always been our privilege to have you come. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you, you, might, you might see me again very soon. Good, good. <laughs> Some hey, of us are dominating the questions. Any of you that haven't asked a question want to raise a question? Paul, yeah, I'd like to say something. <clears throat> this is Bernie. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, thank uh, Wanda for her presentation. Um, I think as the as the lead off person uh, doing these summaries of their what they know about their family, you you've set the standard <laughs> here that uh, high standards to. Uh, you know, you did the PowerPoint and you had it organized well. And I just wanted to say, um, comment on your family. Um, and then you mentioned something that I was guessing was probably true. And I think you kind of, I think for me, confirmed it. You mentioned the importance of faith in uh, the strength of that family. And I remember when you showed that picture of, um, I guess, Andrew's children, the 10 that looks like it was taken maybe in the 1970s or something. Judging clothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you could tell with the, the it was definitely 70s <laughs> clothing there. But um, <laughs> you you were very emotional about what you know. You mentioned they were wonderful people, and uh, I just think you have a uh, you know you're blessed to have uh, that heritage and um, uh. And well, one the one question I had. This is kind of for others that are uh, maybe tuning in here. Um, you, I think, by your account, uh, Andrew made two at least two trips to Norway um, mm -hmm. after he, you know, emigrated to uh, North Dakota and was a you know a homesteader like like many of our relatives were. Um, I'm guessing he was. Uh, you know, fairly, I don't know how common that was. I wouldn't think that would be very common that once they got here, because they were all struggling and for the most part, you know, homesteaders and they came, they came with little and built whatever they had uh, over the years. But um, I don't I've know. I've always thought that too, Bernie, that mm -hmm. that was probably fairly unusual. Yeah. Does anybody else know of, I know on the Haroldson side, my my uh, I'm on my this is through my grandmother Bakken that I'm connected to this group, but um, on the Haroldson side, I know that my uh, I'm told my great grandfather made a trip back there, but I don't think he was. I mean, the family probably went on short rations while he was gone because there was no history of prosperity with him. Uh, Might have been just he wanted to go back for his own purposes, but. Does anybody else remember of stories about their maybe their family, their their great grandparents or whatever going back? I don't know how. I'm just guessing that was uncommon. And um, Bernie and, Gilgey here, Paul Gilgey here. I have I have a humorous story about this, Bernie. Uh, when uh, Andrew went back to Norway, uh, as as Wanda mentioned, Paul went with him. My grandfather. This was the fall of 1999. My mother was born April 7th, 1910. So when Paul headed off to Norway with Andrew, uh, Bessie was pregnant with mom. And in addition to being pregnant with mom, she had two older kids there, uh, 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 Clemens, who was born, I think, in 1906, and Sylvia was born in 1908. So it was a three-year-old and a two-year-old or something like that, plus being pregnant. 
And Sylvia in later years said that when, when Paul went back to Norway, mom was so mad she almost divorced him. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul, when um, when they went, Anna took um, Myrtle, who was two, and Selmer, who was one, and went back to Cummings and stayed while he was gone. Oh, is that so, right? Interesting. I don't know who took care of the livestock, but well, um, must have had was, a neighbor that yeah, helped. Grandma, uh, great grandma, Beth Britta was there. So great grandma Britta would have been available to take care of uh, uh, grandma uh, Bessie. That would have, that would, she would have provided some help. But, <laughs> anyway, very, very hilarious. And Paul, uh, just, just fascinating uh, that, that they took that trip. So other, mm -hmm. other questions? From anybody? I have, a qu I have a question for Wanda. Yeah, yeah. So um, Tim is the youngest of the youngest child. Is he the youngest of all the grandchildren of Anna and Andrew? Do you know? or? Are... Yes, because you're younger than Dan and Linda, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're the baby. So so anyway, you're looking, I just want everybody to know that they're looking at the baby. <laughs> and, and and Sid is one of the babies too, because she she yeah. would have been. Um yeah. Why so it's kind of interesting. Than Danny? Because I always I find that really interesting because you know, I knew all four of my grandparents well, and Tim was the youngest of the youngest, and they were not they were more like great grandparents or they were so far back removed from when he yeah. was born so it's a little bit sad i think but Bo you know. bobby tosted would have been the oldest grandchild okay. i think he was born in 1940 and harold Sorensen would be next he was born in 41 i'm pretty sure that's right so yeah okay, thank quite you. a there's quite a span quite a span yeah tim was born thank in 67 Yes. Yeah. Yep. Twenty-seven so. year period there, the grandchildren were born. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> bigger the hey, family, the bigger the man. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, Paul, I just have a co I just have a comment. Uh, I just want to thank the Tostad family. Um, my great great uncle was Andrew Beaver, who was a neighbor of the original Tosteds, as you pointed out on your chart. And when my wife and I first went to Rolette in 1989, it was Anna and Vernon Tostock who organized the welcome for on behalf of the whole Beaver clan for my wife and I to first come and meet the uh, Norwegian ancestors from Rolette. So I really want to thank the Tostats uh, for doing that. Thank you. There's been a link from the Tostats and the Beavers for many years. <laughs> okay, any further questions, comments? Wanda, you have some some wrap up here. I, this is yeah, I did think of one thing I was going to mention. Um, I was always told that of the 10 children in Anna and Andrew's family, uh, the oldest ones knew how to speak, read, and write Norwegian. Mm -hmm. By the, the middle children, they knew how to uh, uh, speak it, but not read and write. My dad fell into that category. And the very youngest ones, didn't speak it that much either so it just kind of you know trailed off through the years it was always my uncle albert that made sure we sang songs in norwegian at christmas time and uh and that was a real gift uh that we did that uh so uh we i think we all still celebrate our norwegian heritage in various ways uh, mostly eating, probably, <laughs> and and, uh, and I think we're very proud of what our ancestors accomplished. Um, thank, thank you so much, Wanda. Uh, excellent. I think all of us are really enlightened by this gracious yeah. hour we've had on this Saturday afternoon, uh, bringing alive those people. They feel just, Andrew and Anna. We can just feel them alive as long with as long as their kids, and uh, this has been terrific. Now, next month, March 16th, I think, uh, Maria Griffith, on behalf of the Lars and Christina Gilgey family, 
will be telling us about the Lars and Christina Guilty family. Maria, you're on, aren't you? Thought she was. Anyway, she was earlier. Uh, they were driving. I think she okay. may have dropped off, Paul. Good. Well, Jeff, Jeff nice. uh, welcome them, and uh, this will be great. The recording of today will be available uh, as soon as we can get it going. So thank you all. Terrific day. Wanda, again, thanks. And I look forward to seeing you all uh, next month and the successive months. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Wanda.